Take my photograph, my portrait Don't hang it on a wall for me Give it all to my mother To my colony of bees On a ceremony someday Sitting in cemetery trees It is all vanity yet I know a little light I still see Oh, I am arranged Oh, I am arranging Oh, I am arranging you to be To be changed I am arranged Oh, I am arranging Oh, I am arranging you to be To be changed
Having said that, can everyone please stand? <laughs> Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are gathered here today to celebrate the coming together of two very special people. My name is David Lang, and I have the absolute honor and privilege to marry these two lovebirds today, Marianne and Michael. I'm sure you'll agree that we couldn't have asked for a more beautiful setting than the one we have right here at Marubra Beach. They are honored that all of you, their closest friends and family, are here to share this joyous and truly special occasion and are extremely thankful for those who have traveled great distances to be present here today. Well, believe it or not, these two have been together for nine years, with their first kiss taking place on Anzac Day at the Clock Hotel way back in 2013. <laughs> it was Michael who proposed, wanting to do the right thing by asking Mary's mum for Mary's hand in marriage. Mary's family, being in England, complicated this process slightly as you'd have to coordinate with Mary's sister for a time to ask. The call was booked for 7 a.m., a time where Mary would have left for work and Michael would not have. But Murphy's Law meant that Mary worked from home that day, which threw Michael's plan into chaos and led him to making up an excuse to leave early and have a potentially stressful conversation outside a stranger's front lawn. In the end, it wasn't as stressful as Mary's mum said yes. Michael proposed on a sunset walk at Cronulla Beach. It was a hot summer weeknight and COVID had just started breaking out. Michael suggested to go for a walk after dinner and watch the sunset on the beach. Being a hot night, Michael had to think on his feet about how he could you know, hide the engagement ring as it'd be too obvious in his pocket and he didn't want to risk losing the ring. He told Mary he'd take a bag with a jacket just in case it got cold. <laughs> this started a debate, as she didn't understand why he needed a jacket, as it was 30 degrees outside. After five minutes back and forth, they left the house with the bag. Arriving in Cronulla, they went for a stroll and decided to take a seat and watch the sunset. And it was at this point that Michael became nervous. After some time, he decided to man up, and he started saying that he really cared about Mary and couldn't imagine his life without her. Mary looked confused. <laughs> Then he dropped to one knee and pulled out a ring while saying, will you marry me? Mary was in a bit of shock as she didn't expect that to happen that night. And Michael had also dropped the ring in the process of proposing. Amidst the shock, she said yes, and here we are today. 
When I asked them why they wanted to get married, they replied simply with, it feels like the natural next step to take in committing to each other for the rest of our lives. With Michael telling me he loves how Mary is dependable, supportive, and beautiful inside and out. Whilst Mary loves that Michael always tries to make her laugh even when she's in a crappy mood. He always says she is his queen and shows it by ensuring she is always happy and going out of his way to do so. Now, this is normally the part of the story where I talk about what great parents Michael and Marianne are going to be in the future. But they've already got that part down pat with their wonderful son, Lennox. They'd love to have another in the future, and of course, they have their fur babies, Monty and Evie. Of Mary being a mother, Michael told me Mary is an amazing natural mother. She's patient, caring, and has never complained once, even when she's sleep deprived. Michael is hands-on and will no doubt be the fun parent, Mary said. He'll be the one who teaches the kids to bodyboard, ride, ride skateboards, and play football. And it's clear from my meetings with you both that you are meant to be, and I couldn't be happier for the two of you. All right. It is now time for the legal wording. So, Marianne and Michael, have you come here today voluntarily to be joined in this marriage? Yes, good. Two yeses. Always good, everyone. That's excellent. I, David Lang, am duly authorized by law to solemnize marriages according to law. Before you were joined in marriage in my presence, in the presence of these witnesses, I'm to remind you of the solemn and binding nature of the relationship that you are now about to enter. Marriage, according to the law in Australia, is the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntarily entered into for life. So, I call upon the persons here present. The persons here present to witness that I. To witness that I. Michael Murphy. Michael Murphy. Take you, Mary Ann Long. Take you, Mary Ann Long. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Well done. All right, Mary Ann, your turn. Please repeat after me. I call upon. I call upon the persons here present. The persons here present to witness that I. To witness that I. Mary Ann Long. Take you, Michael Murphy. Take you, Michael Murphy. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. That was easy. That was easy. <laughs> All right. It's now time for their own vows. So, who wants to go first? <laughs> You're up. You're up. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Mary. I vow to be your biggest fan and partner in crime. I promise to try and make you smile and laugh, even if it's at my own expense. I promise to support our family with you in a home filled with patience, love and understanding. I will love you faithfully and unconditionally through tough, difficult times and easy times. <clears throat> what may come, I promise I'll always stand by your side. I vow to grow old. Well done, good job. All right, can we get a round of applause, please? Well done. Thank you, mate. All right. Let's see what's up. Do you want me to hold it for you? Yeah. Michael, you are the love of my life, my partner in crime. I knew there was something about you when I first met you all those years ago. A cute guy who clearly knew how to rock a good suit. And check out the suit he's got on today. <laughs> Since then, my life has been more fulfilling my smile has been bigger and my heart full. I love you for the way you make me feel when we're together and miss you so much when we're apart. We've had our fair share of tough times, but we stuck together as a team to overcome life's challenges, always having each other's back. Today, I want to make promises to you that I will always keep. I promise to dream with you, celebrate with you, and walk beside you through whatever life brings. I promise to stay silly and to never take ourselves too seriously. I promise to always make sure there is no food left in your beard and to squeeze your butt every opportunity. I promise to share my food with you and never go to bed angry. I promise to laugh with you, to fight for you, to love you unconditionally for the rest of my life. You are my best friend and I'm the luckiest person on earth to call you mine. I will choose you every day, a million times over. 
Not because I have to, but because I want to. <laughs> yes, round of applause. Well, well, well done, Marianne. All right, it's time for the rings. If I could please ask Ben to come forward with the rings. He's got them good. <laughs> the giving of the rings is an almost universal symbol of marriage and one that is common in many cultures. In just about all of them, the unbroken symbol of the wedding band, which is given to be worn permanently, is a symbol of wholeness, strength, and love, which has no beginning and no ending. So, I'll get you guys to take the other person's ring from me. Beautiful. Nice. Now I'm going to give you this. Just repeat after me. Michael. Michael. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. That we are one with each other. That we are one with each other. Please wear it with pride. Please wear it with pride. Knowing from this moment on. Knowing from this moment on. The commitment we've made to each other. The, com the commitment we've made to each other. Marianne. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. That we are one with each other. That we are one with each other. Please wear it with pride. Please wear it with pride. Knowing from this moment on. Knowing from this moment on. The commitment we've made to each other. The commitment we've made to each other. So quick, so good. <laughs> By the power vested in me, it is my absolute pleasure to pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss the road. <laughs> All right, now Mary and Michael have asked uh, Michael and Alan to be their witnesses for today's ceremony. So I get you guys to come on up. We'll sign some very important documents and be back in just a minute. Thanks guys. Oh, and come on down Lennox. You can make an appearance too. <laughs> Thanks guys. Ladies and gents, if I could please grab your attention just for a few more moments. Thanks so much. So just going to let everyone know, uh, after the ceremony, in just a minute, um, we're going to do a big group photo. So if everyone could please make their way down to the lawn out the back here. Uh, we're going to do a big shot from up here, so that'll be awesome. And then following that, there's going to be a fruit and cheese station to keep your hunger pangs at bay. Uh, and, and drinks, which will be, uh, yep ready for you there. And then our reception will start at 5.30. So if you could please come on back up for a 5.30 uh, seating and we can get the party started later on. Thank you. Michael and Marianne, may you love deeply, laugh heartily, practice patience, and smile often. May you dream together, grow, be crazy and daring, give and give in, and trust enough to take. May you see many sunrises, listen to the rain, savor special moments, and rediscover each other over and over and over again. And finally, when I asked them what the future holds for them both, they said, lots of travel, new experiences, and plenty of laughs along the way. And I couldn't have said it better myself. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the happily married couple, Michael and Marianne. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, if I could grab your attention, please, everybody. Thank you very much. Ladies and gents, it's now time for our speeches for the evening. And having said that, can you please make some noise for our amazing bridesmaid, Lisa, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Husband, yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Awesome. You 
stand up to the side if you like. <laughs> Lisa, everyone, come on. Thank you, buddy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Marianne and Michael's wedding. Congratulations, you two lovebirds. Where are they? Yay! <laughs> Marianne, you are gloriously beautiful, as always. Michael, I think you missed a spot. <laughs> what an amazing day it's been, right? It's, it's so great to see uh, Mary and Michael's friends and family and all those that are close to them um, come together, not just from around here, but from across the world, to celebrate the two of them. Look, finally, this day has come. They say good things come to those who wait, and we wait we did, right? After two years of COVID, countless lockdowns, uh, one postponement, I can tell you nothing was going to stop today from happening. No pandemic, no broken leg, and no vomiting baby. For those who have yet to meet, my name's Lisa, and um, I'm Marianne's bridesmaid today. Look, I'm not really keen on giving speeches and speaking in front of so many people has always been very unnerving for me. So when Marianne approached me um, to speak tonight, naturally I considered saying no. But she insisted that I do one, so I had to tell her straight up. I don't give a speech for anyone. But if you know Marianne, you know that it's really hard to refuse someone like her because no one is sweeter or nicer. So after, over the past few weeks, I've been going down memory lane and what is apparent to me is that, at least to me really, that Marianne is more than just sweet and nice. When this girl left uh, Birmingham for Oz about a decade ago, I know she left with a mission. And that mission was to define her own fate. And to do that, it takes more than just being nice and sweet. So most of you won't know this, but um, this will begin with a story back in 2012. He was in a tiny bar called Tokyo, um, and he was on Cockle Bay Wharf. It was a Friday evening, and two single people locked eyes from, a, from across the room in a noisy bar. <laughs> It's almost like a scene from the movies, right? Two souls really momentarily connected in the mutual knowledge that knowing that this is it. I want to state for the record that it was Marianne that took the first step across that bar to stand face to face. It was Marianne who broke the ice with a simple, I like your hair. <laughs> and it was Marianne who asked to exchange numbers so that they could Keep in touch. Yeah, and in an instant, seconds turns to hours of conversa conversation that formed the foundation of a really true love story between Marianne and I. <laughs> it's so clear that this girl is a go-getter. So when she wants something, she doesn't just talk about it, she makes it happen. And it took balls for her to do what she did that night, and I'm glad she did, because as Michael knows, a connection like this lasts a lifetime. Within months, she fitted it within, uh, like she fitted within my group of girlfriends like a glove, and we are now fated to become her <laughs> token group of Asian girls. <laughs> and ten years on, Marianne is one of my besties, and I will always, literally, go out on a limb for you. But today, I'm passing on that responsibility to you now, Mike, in looking after her. Look, I first heard of um, Michael from Marianne about nine years ago when she sheepishly admitted, and I'll paraphrase a little, I met a guy from work, he's from the Shire, and he has the bluest of blue eyes, he's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, I'm sure you guys would, would have thought the same, right, Shire boy, this must be her Aussie fling. I probably, you probably won't last long enough for me to even meet him. But surely, months later, Blue Eye Mike shows up our next few get-togethers. And one in particular 
was at a Vietnamese cookout hosted by one of my girlfriends, Teresa. <laughs> that night, Michael left quite an impression on us with what looked like his first encounter with Vietnamese cuisine. It is probably fair to say the closest Asian thing that Mike had tasted at that time was probably just Marianne. <laughs> But of course, but of course, if Marianne had anything to do with it, Michael would not stay that way for too long. To turn a well-seasoned Shire boy into one that is culinary cultured is no small feat. But without Marianne, she's not just nice and sweet, but she's a true influencer. That girl has a unique ability to inspire and change her own fate. So fast forward a few years, and I've been told a standard weekend at the household sounds a little bit like, like this. Michael returns home from the Asian butchers. He removes his shoe before he comes into the house, slips into the kitchen for a pair of chopsticks to whisk Marianne her breakfast eggs. I say no more. <laughs> Look, they say the true measure of love um, isn't just about how you feel about someone, but it's about how someone makes you feel about yourself. I think it's safe to say tonight, Michael, you must feel like the luckiest man here today. I do. <laughs> and Marianne. <laughs> and Marianne, you're one of the probably you're one of his best gifts in life. One that I know, Michael, you will thoroughly enjoy rapping tonight. <laughs> Together as partners, nothing can stop you now, as you guys are the force, as you guys are a force, as you force your own path to your own love story. Together, you two are now creators of your own fate. Because within the span of nine years, they bought their first home, then they upgraded again, adopted two fur babies, Evie and Monty, and then by spring 2021, they decided to step an up a notch just because they felt like it and trump it all again with the sweetest of them all, baby Lennox. He may not know it today, but one day he will understand that today marks his mom and his dad's celebration of their triumph of love, life and fate. And this little guy, he's truly the cherry on top of it all. Okay, so now to my favourite part of the night. Um, so for those who know me, before I had kids, you guys know I love any reason to drink. And what I love more than that is to have a reason to make everyone else drink. So it's time to grab your glasses and join me on a round of toasts. My first toast is to Mrs Long, Stephen, Peter, Alan and Michael and uh, also Jenny. Although I never got the chance to meet you all until today, um, I really feel like I already know you because um, Mary Ann couldn't have become that nice, sweet, yet ballsy and uh, all inspiring woman that we know today if it wasn't for you all. So thank you to the Long family for bringing Mary Ann into our lives. Cheers to you all. There's more to come, because <laughs> we all love drinking. So my second toast is to the Murphy family, Mr and Mrs Murphy. I don't know you well, but I know you raised a generous, caring and well-rounded man in Michael. And I'm so glad that Marianne is joining your family, your wonderful family. Cheers to you both. Okay, and my final toast to the bride and the groom. I'm so happy to see the two of you marry today. <laughs> Having watched your relationship grow through the years, I know today, um, today wasn't the start of your lives together because I know you guys have been building this fortress of life together for a while now. Every day you create cherry moments um, to add on to all the wonderful cherry moments you've already had and certainly the many more that you will have. You two are so compatible. You deserve one another. You are meant for each other. 
and complete one another. It is an honour to stand by your side today as your bridesmaid. Cheers to Marianne and Michael. All right, I'm going to hover back. <laughs> Excellent, well Thank done. You. Awesome. Another round of applause for Lisa, everybody. Well done. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> Thanks, <Mike. laughs> All right. Well, we've heard from our maid of honour. It's now time to hear from our best man. Can Ben please come up to the front? G'day, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name's Ben. I went to school with the groom, uh, along with Sanji, other groomsmen, and a few of the boys over there tonight. <laughs> Fellas. Apologies to all the other Murphys here. We just know him as Murph. Or Smurf, or Schmurf. To be honest, we just found out his name was Michael at the ceremony today. <laughs> so when I say Murph, it does mean that bearded fella in the suit there, and not any of your other fine Murphys. Before I start telling you a bit more about him, I'd like to say to Mary and Murph, <clears throat> it's been great to meet your family and friends today. I know how hard it was to make this day happen through plagues and floods, but it's been a great day and thank you for including us in your celebration. Mary, you and your bridesmaids look amazing. Murph and Shange, you guys look good too. So I thought Mary should at least get a glimpse of the old school Murph that we knew. Murph is a man that has gone through some phases, as we all have. I was going to show you some photos, but Sanj and I had a better idea. Sanji? So back in high school when I first knew Murph, we might not have been close as we are now, but it was easy to see the phase he was going through. It was the early 2000s, we were all wondering who the real Slim Shady was. <laughs> 8 Mal must have given Murph some inspiration because this version of Murph I call Eminem Murph. <laughs> Strutting around in his, in his, with attitude in his hoodie, Eminem Murph definitely thought he was a bit of a rebel. I mean, a rebel in our school meant not tying his shoelaces, but still, Eminem Murph was a little lad from the Shire and he had the name to match. After school and into our 20s, Murph and I started hanging out more. Back when the Sydney nightlife was still in its prime, before any lockdowns or lockouts, we had plenty of unforgettable nights that we don't seem to remember. During this time was the next version I call Party Boy Murph. <laughs> As the boys here remember, party boy Murph was known for his long, dirty hair and tight, ripped jeans. After a day on Oxford Street, <laughs> after a day on Oxford Street, shopping for Subi overalls or something, you could find party boy Murph busting a move in Club 77, deep in a festival mosh pit, or eating a late night pie in the cross. We did have a lot of good times. During these years, party boy Murph worked his way through a range of studies, jobs, and dreams. Like little Eminem Murph, party boy Murph always knew what he wanted, but he still hadn't completely found his comfort zone. Then, in the recent years, Murph entered a new phase. Seemingly at the same time, the lovely Mary arrived. This version that Mary, Mary loves and knows, and that we see here tonight, stand up Murph, is Gentleman Murph. <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman Murph is a smooth and confident bloke. He's often seen rocking out a three-piece suit with his wise wizard beard. Gentleman Murph is a good mate. He is a successful, hard-working man, 
a property owner, an early riser, and a gym junkie with a, with a wicked golf swing. <clears throat> gentleman Murph is, but most importantly though, Gentleman Murph is a family man. He's a loving now husband and father, Papa Smurf. <laughs> but he's still enough of a rebel to fight for his family and enough of a party boy to enjoy the good times with them. Mary, we know you created Gentleman Murph and great job with that. I've never known a happier version of Murph and I know he absolutely adores you and Lennox. And of course, your beloved Chihuahua children, Evie and Monty. <clears throat> Mary, we've all loved you from the start. You are kind-hearted, intelligent, beautiful, and a great mum. You are the... Sorry. You are the perfect lady for gentleman Murph. Thank you for looking after Murph, no matter what version he is. Murph, congratulations, brother. We're all proud of you. To Murph and Mary. Beautiful. Well, I guess there's, there's nothing else less to do than uh, invite gentleman Murph up to give a speech. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please make plenty of noise for our amazing groom, Mr. Michael Murphy. Sorry guys, just give me a minute. <clears throat> cool, well, what a day, really. <clears throat> First, I just wanna say a big thanks to everyone for coming. Like, I know with um, all the pandemic and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's been a hard couple of years, so thanks for everyone coming tonight. Especially those that have traveled far. So, um, you know, Mary's family all the way from England, Daiso from Japan, um, my cousins from you know Newcastle way down to to, to um, the central coast and stuff like that, um, and um, you know like I know it's I know it's hard to travel these days, so thank you for coming. <clears throat> um, I would also like to thank all the bridesmaids. A um, couple of killer speeches before me, so you know you, the nerves are now racked because I don't know if I, could, I don't know if I could live up to those two speeches. So thank you. Uh, and just thanks for organising, number one, today to be so special, but also sending me, and I said, well, the bridesmaid sending Mary out on a high note. Um, and thanks for the Sanjin and, and, and Ben for, you know, a memorable box and, um, you know, everything that was involved with, with what's happened today. So, um, you know, they did all this, um, uh, they set the tables, you know, they did all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, thanks, guys. <clears throat> Uh, I'd like to also thank all the Horizons, um, they put on a good night, um, and all our vendors for, for making it all happen. Um, also, I'd, I'd like to thank, and once again, especially uh, Mary's mother for, for helping raise such a, such a lovely lady, and I'm really lucky that you know, she is who she is, and I, I kind of think, you know, I'm a believer in um, you know, the whole nature, over, uh, nature over nature sort of thing, so... Um, you know, I think that she, had, she obviously had great influences on her life to, to turn her into the person she is today. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank my family too. Um, I feel like, you know, um, very similar that, uh, you know, I am the person I am today because of influences in my life and, and um, you know, and that's the first influence, that's where it starts. So. You know, without your family and then your friends and, and you develop into the person you are today. And, and I really look at myself in the mirror and I'm happy with who I am. Hey. Yeah. What is it? Today's, today's a special day. Like, we, um, it's been so long. I, I fucked around for enough times, but I should have asked you years ago. I should have asked you earlier. Um, and after postponing it for a year... I'm just happy to be here, really. Happy to happy to be here today. Um, you, mean, you mean a lot to me, Mary, so I'm happy to be here. Um, I've already changed your name from wifey to be to wifey in my phone. It's done, we're not going back now. There's no turning back. Um, 
I think, look, I'm, I'm not big for these speeches. Um, so I just think, you know, a lot was really said um, about the journey. And, you know, we've been through so many good things together. You're like, we, you know, we initially met the courting stage. Um, we worked together. We eventually moved in. Um, we, you know, we saved up. We worked hard. We bought a house. Um, you know, we got Monty and Evie, you know, um, then little Lennox, and now we, we bought a second place, and we've done it all together. Like, you know, we've had each other's back. And it's been a lot of hard times, but, you know, they haven't faced us. We're, we're Teflon. Just bounces off that shit. That shit bounces off. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you just have had such a positive influence on my life, Mary, so... I just hope that I've had the same influence on you. And um, <clears throat> I just promise to sort of be the man you want, that, the best version of me every day for you. Come on, make some noise for our group, everyone. Beautiful job. Well said, mate. All right, it is now time for our cutting of the cake, followed by our couple's first dance. So, could please invite our amazing couple up here to cut some cake? All right, let's count them down. Three. Two, one, come on, make some noise, everybody! <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Yeah, we're just going to get you guys to grab a sip of champagne if you like it. everyone else to come up and join our couple. Come on, up you go. 